From Thor forgetting about eternity when he really could have used his help, to Holland's Spider-Man being wanted for murder, here are the MCU plot holes that need to be solved in Phase 5. I've got to start with Eternity, who is a pretty big deal as you can tell from the name. The Marvel Comics universe has a couple of these cosmic beings, and the MCU introduced one of them in Thor Love and Thunder. In the movie, Gore the God Butcher is driven by the death of his daughter, and he learns that Eternity will grant a single wish to anyone who manages to reach him, and he also figures out that the only way to reach him is to open the Bifrost. You usually need Heimdall's help with that, but he was killed in Avengers Infinity War. Luckily, Thor also created Stormbreaker in that movie, a superpowered axe that can open the Bifrost for anyone who uses it. Now, here's the thing. Thor and the other gods know about Eternity, and there's no way that the guardian of the Bifrost, Heimdall, didn't know that the Rainbow Bridge could reach him. So why didn't he tell Thor that he could hit up Eternity for help? Like, I think it was an important thing to bring up, as Heimdall had clearly seen Thanos beat the shit out of Hulk, so there was no doubt that Thanos was a serious threat. An even bigger question is why the Avengers had to do the whole time heist when Thor knew that he could access a cosmic god that could undo the snap way easier. I'm not done with Thor and the gods just yet, though, since they themselves are kind of a plot hole. See, while the MCU has embraced the weirdest aspects of Marvel's comics now, they were a little more hesitant to dive into the deep end in the beginning. That's why in the first two Thor movies, the Asgardians are only considered by humans to be gods, but they're not actually that special. In reality, the Asgardians are basically aliens and because they look like humans while being way more powerful and living much longer, humans worship them as gods. I don't know that I agree with this idea of demystifying the gods, but the explanation makes sense. Unfortunately, the whole thing was pretty much undone by Love and Thunder, which introduced us to whole pantheons of gods, all of whom are actual gods. The fourth Thor isn't the only one to go against this explanation. Moon Knight similarly features the Egyptian pantheon of gods being gods. So what exactly is a god in the MCU? How can so many of them exist at the same time? Where do cosmic entities like Celestials and Eternity, who are clearly more powerful than the gods, fit into the fabric of the MCU? Another question that needs to be answered has something to do with Spider-Man. Spider-Man No Way Home is one of the five highest grossing movies of all time, and that was something everyone really saw coming from a mile away, including Sony Pictures, who is always trying to profit as much as they can from the MCU's Spider-Man movies. Leading up to the release of No Way Home, Sony began to create connections between their universe of Spider-Man characters and the MCU. Now, Eddie's brief trip to the MCU makes sense by the logic of the movie, as Doctor Strange's spell draws everyone in the multiverse that knows Spider-Man's identity to the MCU, and that includes Venom's symbiote Hivemind. But the thing that doesn't make sense is why Vulture, who also knows Peter Parker as Spider-Man, was sent away from the MCU by the spell. Also. When Adrian ended up in Sony's universe, how did he settle in so quickly? Where did he get his vulture wings? How did he find out about Morbius? And what exactly does he want his help with? It's widely expected that we're going to see a fourth Spider-Man movie soon, and Sony isn't going to do much to make this make sense, so it comes down to Marvel Studios to pick up the slack. But first, they do have some unfinished business, like with the time-displaced Gamora that's been running around. In one of the most heartbreaking moments of Infinity War, Thanos sacrificed his daughter Gamora in order to get the Soul Stone. Later on in Endgame, the Thanos from 2014 travels into the future to stop the Avengers from undoing the success of his future self. He's joined by Gamora, who at this point was still loyal to him. But the nebula of the present convinces her to betray Thanos. After the Avengers show him who Iron Man really is, Gamora vanishes off the planet, and we see in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 that she's joined up with the Ravagers since. But what I'm thinking is that Gamora is, to use a technical term, a glitch in the time stream. How long can she just keep existing without attracting the attention of something like the Time Variance Authority? Someone has to send her back to 2014 and something has to come of it, right? As it happens, we're going through a multiverse saga. And in the MCU, alternate timelines are alternate universes, which means that this Gamora situation might be resolved sooner than you think, even if James Gunn won't be around to make that happen. The next plot hole takes us to Wakanda, or rather, the underwater world of Talokan. 
Once the Black Panther was introduced to the MCU, it wasn't going to be long until his big rival, Namor, joined the fray. Sure enough, the ruler of Atlantis made his debut in the second Black Panther movie, but the twist was that he didn't actually rule Atlantis. In one of the most inspired choices that director Ryan Coogler made, Namor's generic Atlantis backstory was scrapped, and in its place, Coogler introduced Talacan, an underwater nation existing off the coast of Central America, bearing a strong influence on Mayan culture. Here's the thing, though. The MCU had already introduced Atlantis. Way back in Iron Man 2, we catch a glimpse of a shield hazard map that shows locations of interest. One of them is a nation in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and you guessed it, it's Atlantis. That raises the question of whether the presence of Tolokan means we should forget about it, or if they both exist at the same time. Here's an even cooler idea, though. What if Atlantis was some kind of a rival to Tolokan, and then Namor ends up conquering it? That'd be a cool follow-up to his storyline from Wakanda Forever, but we'll have to wait and see where that business goes. Next, we have to address a plot hole from Loki, which had an exciting ending that didn't quite make sense. Loki was the series that introduced us to the overarching storyline of the multiverse saga, and it also showed off its big villain, or a variant of him. Going by the name He Who Remains, this was a Kang variant who'd been using the Time Variance Authority to ensure he was the only Kang in the entire multiverse, believing that without his efforts, the multiverse would fall into war. That explanation didn't do much to convince Loki's lady friend Sylvie, who killed He Who Remains and caused a branching of the timeline. When Loki returned to the TVA, he ran into his buddy Mobius, and Mobius didn't recognize him. I get that this Loki and this Mobius wouldn't be friends, but why didn't Mobius realize that he was still a Loki? After all, Mobius was obsessed with Lokis before he met ours, so the fact that he was talking to a Loki should have registered for him. I suppose the answer to that question is going to be part of the storyline of Season 2, set to drop in Fall 2023. We're almost done for today, folks, and we're going back to No Way Home for the last plot hole. Between all the Spider-Men and villains that appeared in the movie, you might have forgotten what kicked off the whole story. Here's a reminder. In the post credit scene of Spider-Man Far From Home, we saw that Spidey's true identity had been exposed, and he was framed for killing Mysterio. Although a certain lawyer from Hell's Kitchen managed to get the legal charges dropped, the public is still convinced that Spider-Man killed Mysterio, and that conspiracy is being propped up by people like J. Jonah Jameson. Dealing with legal drama and public drama drives Pete and his friends crazy, which is why he approaches his Avenger buddy, Doctor Strange, to wipe people's memories of his alter ego. Once all the shenanigans with the villains and the Spider-Men begin, though, the writers apparently forget the business with Mysterio. And even after the movie is over, and people have forgotten who Peter Parker is, they never resolve the conspiracy against Spidey. Despite this, when Spider-Man triumphantly swings across New York at the end of the movie, it looks like the people just see him as their friendly neighborhood Spider-Man again. As I said before, we can probably look forward to a fourth Spider-Man movie before long, and it's possible that it'll address this plot hole as part of his life after being forgotten by everyone. Fingers crossed! So, from Spider-Man still having blood on his hands, to Thor overlooking a huge ace up his sleeve, those were the MCU plot holes that need to be solved in Phase 5.